Now that our design is ready, we can begin to install our system. But before you start to dig, there are a couple of very important items to take care of. First, check your local codes for any requirements before you cut into your property's service line. And second, it's very important that you have your local utility companies mark the location of all buried cables, pipes, or gas lines on your property. Trenching can be done by hand, but using a trenching machine is much easier and faster. Trenchers can be rented by the hour, day, or week from a rental equipment dealer. The rental service will show you how to operate the machine properly and safely. To start, place a marker or flag at every sprinkler location according to your design layout. Then use string or paint to indicate where you'll need to trench. Dig trenches 8 to 12 inches deep. When the trenching is complete, lay out the pipe and fittings. For this property, we'll be using PVC pipe. The next step is to tie into the main service line running from the water meter to your house. First, shut off the water supply at your meter. Tapping into the service line is a critical step. Depending on the type of material, there are several ways to proceed. This may be the one step you pass off to someone with more experience. In fact, some local codes require that it be completed by a licensed professional. Again, it's important to check your local codes before you start. The most convenient way to cut this PVC service line is with a PVC pipe cutter. For this project, we're going to install a slip-type compression tee. Remove a small section of pipe, enough to allow the tee to slide on. Be careful not to take out too much or the tee fitting will not be wide enough to cover the remaining gap. Next, install a manual sprinkler system shutoff valve. This new shutoff valve will allow you to turn off the water to the sprinkler system without affecting the water supply to your home. We prepare the valve by installing threaded fittings. Then we can measure and cut a length of PVC pipe and glue it directly to the fittings. To assure a good seal, Use a piece of sandpaper to take off any rough edges caused by the cutting. When you're ready to start gluing the parts together, follow the directions on the product. With most brands of glue, you'll first brush on a primer to clean and prepare the pipe surface and the inside of the fitting. Now apply the glue lightly to the inside of the fitting and on the outside of the pipe. Slip the pipe into the fitting and give it a quarter turn. How long you hold it depends on the weather, but 10 or 15 seconds should be plenty. Again, prep and glue the outside of the pipe and the inside of the fitting. Twist a quarter turn and hold to let the glue set. For those who live in a colder climate, you'll also need the ability to winterize your system. In these areas, after turning off the sprinkler system supply, any water left standing in the pipes could freeze, causing serious damage. So it's important to install some additional fittings that provide a way to evacuate any remaining water in the system. For further details, refer to the winterization section at www.rainbird.com. From our new system shutoff valve, continue to build the supply line. Also, after shutting off the new valve, you can restore the water supply to your home. If your design calls for a backflow prevention device, install it next. If you're using anti-siphon valves, then just continue assembling pipe to the first valve manifold. Now run the controller wire from the timer to the valve manifold location. 
place the wire into the same trench as the supply pipe. To help protect them, tape the wires to the bottom of the pipe. Notice we've chosen wire that has more strands than actually required. It'll make it easier to expand your system if needed. Next to come, the valve manifold. A valve manifold is simply several valves located next to each other that are fed from one shared water supply line. As you measure and cut the pieces for the manifold, allow about three inches of pipe between the fittings. This will reduce the chances of a bad connection and also leave room to work if you need to take the valves apart for cleaning or repair. With all the pieces lined up, we can begin to build our manifold. When using threaded components, you can use Teflon tape, but don't use pipe dope. Carefully thread the fitting onto the valve until hand tight. Then use a wrench to finish tightening the fittings, but not more than one and a half additional turns. This applies to any type of threaded fitting, not just valves. By the way, when installing any type of valve, make sure the water supply goes in the inlet side. As always, before you glue, get rid of any rough edges. Brush on a primer to clean and prepare the pipe surface and the inside of the fitting. Now apply the glue lightly to the inside of the fitting and to the outside of the pipe. Then slip the pipe into the fitting and give it a quarter turn. As you add fittings, be aware of how they must sit to allow the manifold to lay correctly. Here's another tip. Add an additional section to the valve manifold and cap it. This will allow you to add valves later if you need to expand your system. Follow this same procedure until all the parts are assembled. Local codes mandated we install a separate backflow prevention device. This led us to go with inline valves for the zones. They'll be installed below grade and be covered with a valve box for additional protection. Some municipalities permit another type of manifold setup. This one combines the functions of the backflow prevention device and the valve into one unit. These are called anti-siphon valves. As you can see, anti-siphon valves are located above ground and the supply lines drop back down below grade as they travel out to the different zones. Regardless of whether you're using anti-siphon valves or a backflow prevention device, they must be installed 12 inches above the highest sprinkler or according to local codes. Also, when using any type of PVC pipe above ground, paint the pipe with a good exterior type paint. This prevents the ultraviolet rays from baking the pipe which would cause the pipe to become weak, brittle, and susceptible to pressure blowouts. At the valve manifold, make the electrical connections to the valves using the wire that was laid in the trench. Notice each valve has two wires. Take one wire from each valve, it doesn't matter which one, and join them together. These will be connected to the common wire going back to the controller. We have two valves which will require a total of three wires. Pull back the unused wires and save for any future expansion. Choose white for the common and any other color for each of the valves. Prepare the wires that will be connected to the valves and strip about one half inch of insulation from the ends. Now take the remaining single wire from one of the valves and connect it to one of the colored field wires. And take the remaining wire from the second valve and connect it to the other colored wire. Then connect the valve wires that we already tied together to the white or common wire.
It's important to use waterproof wire nuts or grease caps to protect these connections from the elements. There are several different types to choose from. Make sure there is no copper wiring exposed outside of the wire nut to avoid electrical shorts and corrosion. Keep in mind, you'll want to know which colored wire goes to which valve when you start connecting wires to the controller. Now that our valve manifold is in place, we can start adding pipe from each valve to the zone it will be operating. Continue on down the line until every sprinkler location has been supplied. To connect the sprinklers to the lateral water supply lines, we recommend using Rainbird swing assemblies. This provides more flexibility to place the sprinkler exactly where you want it quickly and easily. At each sprinkler location, install a threaded fitting on the lateral pipe. Then, install a swing pipe assembly into the fitting until snug. Now, install the sprinkler head to the swing assembly and hand tighten. Then continue on to the next sprinkler location. If you prefer, you can use a simple handsaw for your installation. Just make sure you take off any rough edges before you glue. Follow these same procedures until all sprinklers have been installed. After all the pipe has been laid and the sprinklers have been installed, the next step is to flush the system. So take the tops off all the sprinkler heads and turn on the water at the main system control valve. Now use the bleed screw to open the zone control valves one at a time. Turn the bleed screw a quarter turn. You'll hear the sound of water rushing as the valve opens. Flush each area until the water runs clear. When you turn it off, turn the bleed screw clockwise and hand tighten only. Now you can go back and reinstall the sprinkler tops. Position the sprinkler and stabilize it without filling the entire trench. Also, it's important to make sure the sprinkler is straight up and down for optimum performance. When finished, the top of the sprinkler should be level with the ground. Now you can fill in the trenches. Rocks damage plastic pipe easily, so only use clean, rock-free soil. Also, position the valve covers so they can be backfilled too. Notice we used bricks to provide a stable foundation for the box to set on. Later, when the landscaping is in place, even if the ground is wet, the box won't sink if someone steps on it. The irrigation timer is the brains of your system. Install it in a convenient location, either indoors or outside, but make sure you have power nearby. And if it is installed outside, it must be an outdoor model to protect it from the elements. It's a good idea to run the wires through a section of PVC pipe. This will help prevent damage to the wires. Prepare the same colored wires you used at the other end when connecting the valves. Now connect the common or white wire to the common terminal and take the colored wires that you connected to the individual valves and connect each of them to their own terminals. This allows each valve to be operated individually. Finally, after all the valve wires have been connected, supply power to the timer and program it according to its instructions. As you plan your watering schedule, check for any local water requirements or restrictions 
such as odd or even day watering. This would also be a good time to install a rain sensor. When it rains, the rain sensor temporarily shuts off the system so that you don't water during wet weather. In fact, many municipalities actually require rain sensors and some even offer rebates to help cover the cost.